What is going on everybody? This is Coster Games. Welcome to another Manor Lords video. Today we're going to be talking about expansion. This is how you grow into different regions of your game. As you can see, I currently have two. The first region that you get um, is usually going to be a heck of a lot easier than all of the other ones. I found that I usually can't expand into a third region by the time the AI... This is on the very balanced difficulty, um, just your default. But I usually can't even get into the third region by the time the AI collects all of them for themselves. So I can usually only get one region. When you go to collect this region, when you go to click on it, you're going to do claim with influence. It's going to cost, I believe, a thousand at first. Um, so it'll be a thousand of your influence, which you can find right up here in this right corner. And that is going to be this little uh, gauntlet icon. And this is your influence. This you can earn influence through. A couple of different things. Number one being uh, fights, winning fights, breaking soldiers, collecting the bandit camps. Those can all count towards influence. Another thing that counts towards influence is going to be when you go to your manor and then go to your taxes, your tithe. Um, this is my default setup. I do 10% land tax and a 5% tithe. You can definitely do a little bit higher. As you can see, there's not a ton of consequences when it comes to this uh, like 15% here. Taxation is about 27%, but I'm not growing. As long as this number is above 50, you're perfectly fine. That's how you gain more people is having that approval above 50. What you do is you click on this. You spend your 1,000 points. That then claims your region after a certain amount of time. Usually, if you are claiming an unclaimed region, the AI is not going to retaliate against you. Um, so you'll be able to collect it pretty easily. Now, after that, to settle a region, you need about uh, 250 of your personal treasury. And you go down into construction, administration, and you build a settler's camp. Now, you place that, and there's three options, I believe. I believe it goes 250. Let's check. I can't I can't do it. We'll do it later. But I believe it's 250, 500, and 750 to give your starters or your new settlers a significant amount of more resources. And that's just by spending more of your personal treasury. Now, let's talk about the more difficult version of expanding, which is what I'm about to do. And you guys are going to get to watch this uh, in real time here. I'm going to come in here and claim another region. So when expanding, you're going to want to expand into other resources that you do not have. So if we overview this map, as you guys can see, these are rich deposits here with the little crowns on top of them. I already have wild animals, which allows me to collect a lot of leather and a lot of meat. I also already have iron deposits. So as you guys can see, there's not really a ton of resources that I don't have already. Wild animals, stone, rich stone deposits are cool. They don't do a ton in the game yet. The stone isn't super needed. You only need about 20 to 30 stone to do all of your upgrades that you're needing and then you're done with it. So stone deposits as of right now in this current build, I mean, it just released maybe a week or so ago. They're not super important. Now, the most valuable rich resources that I can think of right now are going to be your wild animals for a surplus of leather, which you can use with goats, so it's not the top one. Obviously, your top deposits are going to be your iron deposits. You, if you can get these rich and throw a deep mine on them, they last forever. You can make as many weapons as you want and trade them. So I believe we are going to push into this middle region, and that also helps because enemy armies come from the outside of the map. So if I have this middle region, I know that this area is pretty safe. I can get soldiers here by the time an enemy army gets anywhere inside. So we're going to go here. We're going to go claim with influence. King's favor is not currently in the game yet, but we're going to go claim with influence. I'm pressing my claim. And now this little thing is going to pop up. Waldbrand or Wald, Waldbrand is this region right here. So what's going to happen is the AI will retaliate. They're not going to want you to take their land and they are going to send an army. Here we go. So you have a status here. This is your challenge results. This is going to be whether or not you are beating them or losing against them in the battle. This doesn't matter a ton. This is how many days are remaining to bring yourself to the battlefield to fight them. If I hover over this magnifying glass icon, as you guys can see, a circle pops up right in the middle of this region. And that is going to tell me this is the meeting spot for the battle. So now I'm going to slide down here to my army. I'm going to select everybody and rally them. I'm going to rally them to this point. Now, this is super important. 
once you rally, your people are automatically set to run to positions. This is going to wear out your soldiers, especially your retinue. If they are plate armored, they are heavy. They do they should not be running. It doesn't matter if it takes them a little bit longer to get over there. I have 90 days to go show up at this battle. So let's go ahead and move everybody into position. They are going to send you notes talking about uh, giving you money for peace. You can accept this if you want. I always write back claims are not, uh, non-negotiable. I want to fight them. I want this region. Now, I haven't done any of the negotiating in the game yet, so feel free to experiment with that if you have the time or if like somebody's attacking you and you want to have peace and you know pay up or have them pay you either one as you guys can see here is the enemy's army this is pretty average you're going to have a large retinue group which is going to be right here they have 36 units 36 archers two swordsmen and brigands i have not found spearmen to be showing up often the most dangerous part of this army is going to be the retinue i believe they are full plate no, they are not. Wow. Okay. So they're not even a full plate retinue. As you can see, I believe both of mine are, which they're going to be right here. That is the difference between them. It's a huge difference, actually. And if you want to know how to upgrade them real quick while everybody's walking around, you go to here, you go to retinue cu customization. And on the right side of the screen, there is going to be an option to give them plate armor. And you can pay for that. Or if you have plate armor being made in your towns, you can give it to them for free. So again, we are looking at the magnification right here. They are moving in from this side. We're not going to have a ton of time to get ready. We are just going to set up, if we can, right here. Just going to get our guys on over there. They're not running. I have it in fast forward, 12 times speed. I know you guys can't see it because my camera's right there. All right, so now we are going to get set. There we go. We are now set. The archers do a little bit of damage as you can see i don't ever make archers i literally just make spearmen along with my retinue the archers i i've had a lot of issues with them in the past they are kind of clunky and they don't do enough damage to warrant me making them like watch how easy this is we're gonna just push right into them so this is four units of spearmen and two fully armored plate retinues see we just broke two of them three of them we're gonna keep pushing in on them they're gonna write another thing non-negotiable we are beating you i am not gonna take your money over this land and we're gonna push in right here archers are taken out victory so now we have claimed this area after defeating uh, the enemy in the battle so now if i wanted to i usually settle right after winter so you're talking march um march i'll build my settlement camp and go ahead and get people in here it's a little bit late for me right now but if i wanted to build set settlers i would like i said i'd come over here to the administration inside of construction grab my settlers camp click it down and here this is where this is what I was talking about with having the extra wealth. You can upgrade the supplies that they come with, and this allows you to have a much more lenient start uh, than what you had at the start of your own game. Now, one little tip before we go with your military, if you keep a surplus of helmets and or spears, whatever you have in your army currently, like I have nine spears and 21 large shields. As you can see, I did take a few losses. These uh, spearmen go up to level thir or tw 36, I believe. So when I disband these guys, as you can see, they I've almost all healed to 32 out of 36, and now they're just missing some weapons, and it has taken it immediately out of my stockpile. So now I'll go in there and make 40 new shields, 40 new spears, and have those stockpiled for the next time I have a fight. That way they can return, immediately heal back to full health, or have the full 36 people, and then they'll be good to go from then on. So I hope this video showed you guys how to expand in Manor Lords. If it helped you out in any way, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm a smaller channel, helps out a ton. If you have any questions about the game, leave a comment down below. I get to them pretty quick. I'm always watching that. So I would love to have a little discussion with you guys down there. Or if you have some ideas for a uh, next video, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.